Hello family, greetings from New Delhi, India. My name is Luke Speckman. And I'm Brandon Speckman. And we're so excited to be launching season three of the Good News Network. The Good News Network, better known as GNN, is the official online newscast for the International Christian Churches, where we share with you God's victories as His Spirit works through our global family of churches. Now today we'll begin with a recap of the exhilarating August 2022 Global Leadership Conference, hosted by the City of Angels Church in Los Angeles. Following that, we'll update you on a few significant leadership transitions and share a very special announcement from the Sold Out Press International. Next, we'll view a day in the life of Katia, a sister in the Warsaw Poland Church. And finally, move into good news from around the world. So to start, we bring you incredible news from the historic 2022 Global Leadership Conference, One in the Spirit. The GLC festivities actually began Wednesday, August 4th with the World Sector Leaders Retreat, where all our valiant leaders of the 11 world sectors were bonded in the spirit all the more. This is the family that leads the worldwide family. This momentous gathering was followed on Friday evening by the Crown of Thorns Council, who oversee world missions in the sold out movement. Also hosted that week prior to the GLC was the Ignite program. Brought to prominence by Southeast Asia geographic sector leaders Ricky and Colleen Chalinor, it was led this year by the dynamic couple Nick and Jesse Cly. Ignite is an incredible ministry training program for the select group of teenage trailblazers. Of note, many current church leaders have been raised up through the help of this program. This life-changing week culminated in the Ignite Sunday service on August 7th, attended by the Crown of Thorns Council, which was hosted by this year's lineup of talented, fiery teen disciples. Immediately following on Sunday evening was the opening of the second annual International Campus Leadership Seminar entitled Company of Prophets. Last year, since there was a pace-setting campus ministry in Miami, Marcel and Tia Turner directed the ICLS. This year, the ICLS was directed by Dr. Jason and Sarah Dimitri. Based on Jason's new soapy book entitled Company of Prophets, a church builder's field manual, this faith-building conference with a company of almost 1,200 modern-day prophets focused on how to be expert campus ministry builders by imitating Jesus' ministry in our campuses worldwide. Campus leaders left much better equipped with ministry practicals and overflowing with faith. The ICLS spanned Sunday evening to Tuesday morning. On Wednesday night was the International College of Christian Ministries Chancellor's Gala, where the 2022 five doctoral degree recipients shared about the arduous but rewarding road to their degrees. Thursday was the explosive kickoff to the 2022 Global Leadership Conference. In the span of those four days, Thousands of disciples from Moscow to Mexico City to Manila to mainland China had a spirit-filled time of leadership training. The Anaheim Convention Center, the west coast of the United States' largest convention center, was buzzing with vibrant fellowship and the majestic worship of the disciples. As due to the pandemic and biennial planning, it had been four long years since the last GLC, and it did not disappoint. As a variety of focused ministry breakout sessions were hosted to help edify disciples in every stage of life, from singles and single parents, to marrieds, campus, teens, to the mature ministry, and so much more. And heaven rejoiced on this pivotal weekend, beholding 15 incredible new appointments to the biblical offices of evangelist and women's ministry leader, where Ole and Regine Arvadola of San Francisco, Rezo David Adze of Moscow, Russia, James Kwok of Hong Kong, China, Sandra Smith of Warsaw, Poland, Victor and Marlene Montano of Louisville, Kentucky, RJ and Goldana McKay of Chicago, Illinois, Paul and Rebecca Busari of London, England, as well as Rico and Janelle Jones and Ashton and Cara Hughes, both of Los Angeles. Mercy Night, as always, was a thrill as a sea of green descended upon the convention center in honor of our church's benevolent arm, Mercy Worldwide, which stands for maximizing efforts for relief, care, and youth. Mercy Night concluded with the Kingdom's Got Talent, where disciples shine through singing, rapping, and beautiful cultural dances. Saturday night was the much anticipated Kingdom Banquet, where we dined together and also ate spiritual food as Dr. John Kazi preached, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Later that night was the institution of two new honorary awards, the Order of Mordecai for brothers and the Order of Esther for sisters, which will be given annually to disciples who have displayed courage under fire in the most dire of circumstances. These were presented to the Orlando church leaders, Chris and Sonia Klopek, 
70-year-old missionaries, Fred and Virginia Speckman, and Dr. Elena McKean. Also handed to Viktor Mazlyanikov on behalf of the Lviv Ukraine evangelist Bogdan Makeda, and also handed to the beautiful daughters of Miki Ngungu, leader of the Kinshasa Church, on his behalf. Both brothers had received in hand the beautiful MOVA Globe Award. On Sunday, with almost 4,000 in attendance, we witnessed the Los Angeles 10th International College of Christian Ministries commencement ceremony, beginning with a glorious procession of 135 students receiving bachelor's degrees, 11 their masters, and five awarded their doctorate degrees, namely Dr. Ricky Chalinor, Dr. Jason M. Dimitri, Dr. Blaise Fumba, Dr. Mike Patterson, and Dr. Joseph Willis. Following the conferring of degrees, in order to devote more time and energy on the mission field, in an historic moment, movement leaders and founders of the ICCM, Drs. Kip and Elena McKean, handed off the chancellorship of ICCM Global to the esteemed Drs. Tim and Leanne Kernan. Later in the service, a heartfelt communion by Tim Kernan and Jason Dimitri showed the power of the cross as they shared their apologies and reconciliation with all. Following, Dr. Joan Carey Willis shared a convicting contribution. The conference keynote sermon, One in the Spirit, was expertly delivered by Latin American world sector leader, Dr. Raul Moreno, where he inspired us all to make something out of nothing. And of course, the conference was ended with several miracles. First were two restorations. Michaela Foley, who was so moved by the faithfulness to Christ of her mother during her passing earlier that year, that again, Michaela pledged to be a faithful disciple herself. Then A.J. Hoff, a former ICOC evangelist and missionary in Africa, was restored through the efforts of Blaise Fomba and Matt Sullivan. Following that, we witnessed an astounding 13 baptisms. And to conclude the conference, six Operation Eagle mission teams were sent off. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Louisville, Kentucky, Kansas City, Kansas, Iowa City, Iowa, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Auburn, Alabama. And with that, we are now in 37 of 50 states in America. Lord willing, by August 2024, less than two years from now, the sold out movement will be in all 50 states. So amazing. Now the expansion of the kingdom this year is more than we ever asked or imagined. Although the plan as of December 2021 was to plant 17 churches in 2022, Lord willing, we will now be planting 27 churches. A special mention are Bahrain, Berlin, Germany, Casablanca, Morocco, Cocobamba, Bolivia, Edinburgh, Scotland, Ho Chi Minh, Vietnam, Ibadan, Nigeria, Kampala, Uganda, Lviv, Ukraine, Naga, Philippines, Sao Carlos, Brazil, Stockholm, Sweden, St. Petersburg, Russia, Sucre, Bolivia, Taipei, Taiwan, Tijuana, Mexico, and Warsaw, Poland. Through these plantings, the Spirit will have guided the sold-out movement into 56 nations. We want to give a huge thank you to GLC directors, Drs. Tim and Leanne Kernan, as well as Drs. Kip and Elena for working relentlessly to organize such an unforgettable experience for everyone. We're so grateful for all that you do. Yes. Now, many inspiring transitions are happening in the upcoming months, but here's just a few for which to pray. In our previous episode, it was mentioned that Raja and Debs Rajan would be moving to the Miami church to further their training. Well, the Spirit has instead blown them in October towards the Sydney church led by Austral China world sector leaders Joe and Carrie Willis to further their training there. Luke, myself, and all the South Asian churches are so grateful for all that the Rajans have done beginning with a small remnant group in Chennai in 2008 to now five incredible churches in India and Nepal. As many of you know, based on the previous letter read in your church, during the start of the conflict in Ukraine, Oleg and Aliona Sorotkin, who were Russian and Ukrainian respectively, moved to join the Chicago church for safety. After many conversations with the McKeans and the Kazis and much consideration, the Sorotkins have chosen to step down from world sector leading in Eurasia to focus on becoming shepherds. Prayerfully, they will move to the London church led by Michael and Michelle Williamson for further training. With a leadership change of this magnitude, Kip, along with the other world sector leaders saw God ordering our steps and creating a new world sector as the result. The European world sector led by the Williamsons will now include Ukraine and the Baltic nations of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. The other nations of the Eurasia world sector, in essence, the former Soviet Union nations, the foremost of which is Russia, will be united with the PAC world sector under the new name, the Northern Federation, to be led by Dr. John and Emma Kazi. John's first decision in leading this new world sector is to plant St. Petersburg, Russia in October by sending out Gustavo and Anna Pi from Moscow, two bold leaders raised up as they trained under Kip and Elena last fall in Kiev. Years ago, Kip gave a lesson from the book of Nehemiah where he paralleled the rebuilding of the wall around Jerusalem to world evangelism. Each gate was a crown of thorns church and each church would build their section of the wall to the next gate. 
the next church, thus completing the wall around the world. As leaders continue to be raised up and sent out, the Latin American world sector, led by Dr. Raul and Linda Moreno, has witnessed an incredible shift in leadership to ensure the evangelization of their part of the wall. We are excited to see young leaders like Danilo and Carol Bataglin assume leadership in Bogota, Colombia to oversee the northern cone of South America, and for Tulio and Vaitza Amaral to now lead the Mexico City campus ministry and to oversee the evangelization of Central America. With these decisions and already in place, Vinny and Bia Rodriguez of Sao Paulo, who lead all of Brazil, as well as Alfredo and Alejandra Anuch of Santiago, who lead the southern cone of Spanish-speaking South America, the entire wall of Latin America will surely be built. On September 8th, the mighty Dubai Church, the pillar church of the Arab Gulf nations, welcomed their new leaders, Mark and Micah Carbonell. Unified in heart and mind to evangelize the world, no matter the cost, the tribe world sector, led by Drs. Tim and Leanne Kernan, graciously once again volunteered one of their best ministry couples to move out of their world sector and turn the focus to building up God's kingdom in the Middle East world sector, led by Corey and G. Blackwell. The Carbonells were baptized in Dr. Michael and Sharon Kirshner's Bible Talk in LA. Then in 2015, since they were Filipino nationals, as one-year-old Christians, they joined the Manila mission team. They were raised up by Ricky and Colleen Chalinor and planted Baguio City in 2021 and grew up from 13 to 56 disciples in just 10 months. The Carbonells now serve as a geographic sector leader couple for the Gulf nations. We can't wait to see all that God will do as he always blesses those who take on the call to go anywhere, do anything, and give up everything for the sake of the gospel. And now for a special Soapy announcement from Chris Adams, the Soapy executive editor, followed by a day in the life of our sister Katya of Warsaw, Poland. Greetings from Sold Out Press International. Very excitingly, the 18th installment to the Soapy Library has just arrived on Amazon. This incredible book entitled Project Tyrannus, a blueprint for building a powerful campus ministry by Dr. Mike Patterson of Boston, is a comprehensive guide to building a dynamic and fruitful campus ministry through a few fundamental ministry principles and accompanying strategies. It also includes a fascinating history of campus ministry from the days of Jesus' earthly ministry to the present time. However, this book is not just for college students, but will inspire married, singles, and teens about how God's plan to evangelize the world has always included the campus ministry. So please go to Amazon now to add this must read to your collection. So I became a disciple one year ago and I was baptized in the end of the September. And the interesting thing is that at the same time in the Kiev was Kip and Yelena McKeon. And Kip made the first principles for all of the Kiev church from this stage. So I have the first principles uh, on the study and I have the first principles from the Kip from the stage. So I have the really deep conviction now. My hometown, this is a Kiev. I was baptized there. But the story, how I came here to the Poland, starts from the end of the February this year, when the war starts. I understand that I don't want to stay in a country anymore because of the safety. And when we come here, we were super happy because we met disciples who came to help the Ukrainian refugees. Uh, Nick and Denis Bordieri, our Mercy Worldwide directors. I was happy to meet with uh, James Morgan and Deidre. It was super nice that they was already here to help us. And Bordieri asked me, like, uh, what do you think about to start church here? And I was like, oh, of course I'm open to do this, because last year I was first time in a EMC in a Paris, and I saw how London Church sent the mission team to the Edinburgh. And I was like, wow, I want to be on their place one day. And who knows that like, God will make my dreams come true so quickly. So I was like, yes, of course I'm ready. <laughs> Of course, every morning we have our quiet times. I really love to go to praying somewhere outside. Then I come back reading the Bible. Then we have a meeting in a university and sharing face in person and in a social media. And the good news that um, since this year, 
I will start to study in this university. This is the main university of the Poland, so I can be full day there and to study and to do God's work. After we can have the Bible studies and also we often go to the refugee center to help the Ukrainian refugees there to play with the kids there on doing any another job there. And sometimes during the day I read the Bible in Polish or any book in the Polish languages because none of us here in Poland are actually not Polish. So we need to learn the Polish language. And the good news is that yesterday we have the, our first Bible study in the Polish language. After that we can have our meeting of the body like a women's midweek or Friday Campus Diva where we have the awesome games and where we have the good food and uh, good lessons. I was super inspired to be on a GLC because I'm happy to meet my worldwide family. I'm happy to meet my worldwide family because I feel safety there. I feel like part of the heaven. It looks like this because all of the disciples are there. We sing in songs, we are rejoicing, we are spend time together and I know that I can trust these people because they have the same convictions that I have because our main conviction is to love each other and when I was there I really felt love from all of the disciples all around the world. I'm happy to meet disciples from the Australia, uh, from all of the Europe, I'm happy to meet disciples from the US and from Brazil and from the Mexico and I love my family and I'm happy that I was in a GLC. When I came back to Poland from GLC, I have the decision for myself to try to build the big church here. Because I see a lot of disciples there and this is so cool to have a lot of disciples together. This is really worldwide family who supporting each other. And I wanted to work harder to build this church here in Poland. Thank you, dear Katia, for sharing your life with us and boldly preaching the gospel, laying down your life every day. We will continue to pray for you and the Warsaw Church. Now it's time for good news from around the world. Let's begin with an update on the recent inaugural services. The Auburn mission team of 15 led by Ngunjos had 53 in attendance. The Casablanca team of eight led by Mbani Armel and Kwasi Sylvain had 78 in attendance. The Drydens assisted by the Sullivans in planting Baton Rouge, their team of 12 had 73 in attendance. The Oklahoma City of 16 led by the Pavones had 79 in attendance. The Iowa City mission team led by the Foxes with just 15 disciples had 132 in attendance for service. And lastly, the Kampala Uganda team of 13 led by Osas and Ariel Atahengbe had exactly 100 in attendance and have already been blessed with three baptisms. And to God be all the glory. On Saturday, September 10th, four San Francisco disciples on the University of California Berkeley American football team Aluafemi, Isaiah, Patrick, Moelu, played against three University of Nevada Las Vegas football brothers, Jordan, Sanika, and Sebastian, for the first time. What a great job the San Francisco and Las Vegas churches have done for converting D1 athletes who are incredible opinion leaders on campus. A few months ago, Kel and her seven-year-old son, Justin Buama, contacted Mercy Worldwide Global Directors Nick and Denise Bordieri in hopes of partnering their charity organization, Heroes and Hearts, to build a library and study room for children at the Kasper Zaka Refugee Center in Warsaw, Poland. After several months of planning, the dream became a reality as Mercy ambassadors, along with Kel, Justin and Ree, built shelves, painted the walls, organized the books, and hosted fun events for the 100 children housed at the Refugee Center. Over in the London Church, our brother Kwabena Osai, who studies history and politics at Oxford University and holds a position in the Secretary's Committee at the Student Union, was listed amongst the 150 of UK's most outstanding African and Caribbean students. What an incredible accolade for our brother. 
In the Sydney Church, led by Joe and Carrie Willis, the campus ministry has inspired the entire church as the University of Sydney Bible Talk has grown from four to ten disciples this year. And the fire doesn't stop there. On September 18th, Waz Ohieri, a medical science student at Macquarie University, was baptized into Christ. And on September 25th, the Sydney's 85 disciples had 232 in attendance at their International Day to break their record attendance by 70. On September 11th, the Lagos Church Sisters, led by charismatic Chinyiri Akwinfinwa, hosted a powerful Women's Day entitled More Than Enough, as 73 sisters had 270 souls in attendance. Their guest speaker, Patricia Fumba, the women's ministry leader over French Africa, preached powerfully as she roused the women to know that they are more than enough in Christ if they are united with Him. This same day, Lagos witnessed three baptisms, two of which were women. The Johannesburg Church, led by Africanist World Sector leaders Dr. Andrew and Patrick Smelly, celebrated its third anniversary with 129 in attendance and a glorious baptism. Within the three weeks of September alone, the Africanist World Sector has witnessed 31 souls added to the kingdom. Included in that number are the French-speaking African churches led by Blaise and Patricia Fumba, who also celebrated 22 more precious souls added to the family of God. And now to close this episode out, we will recap two churches who held their 10th anniversary services. As we continue to see God's plan of world evangelism unfold, it is encouraging to see congregations continuing to grow healthy and strong over the years. During the month of September, both the Boston and San Francisco churches held their 10th year anniversary services. God has truly multiplied the kingdom worldwide through their efforts. Let's begin with Boston. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Mike and Chanel Patterson initiated a campaign to grow the Boston Church from 53 disciples in 2020 to now 124. As the disciples grew in faith and increased in number, Boston reached its prayer goal and inspired the entire American East Coast. On September 18th, the disciples from all over the New England area met in Boston for a glorious 10th anniversary service. Within the last year, the Boston Church has planted Providence, Rhode Island, Manchester, New Hampshire, and Portland, Maine, known as the Casco Bay International Christian Church. With well over 200 gathered in attendance, the moving anniversary service included the sharing of original Boston team members Raphael and Melissa Jerez for good news, and Kevin and Gina Dawson for contribution. The service closed out with an amazing sermon entitled Shaking the Nations, preached by original church planters. Center, Colton Roan, and three baptisms, one from the campus ministry in Casco Bay and two from Boston, including a Harvard University student. A few years ago, the San Francisco Church, led by Jason and Sarah Dimitri, made a plan to evangelize their geographic territory with a roadmap called the Canaan Project. With the planting of the 10th region, the North Bay, just a few weeks ago, they have successfully reached the entire Bay Area, which includes about 8 million people. The church would also create the first ever Company of Prophets, or COPS program. Here, Jason Dimitri would use imitable principles for building the church and training those enrolled to take up the call of leadership. The program was so effective in producing exceptional leaders that it became the focus for this year's ICLS. Several COPS programs have been initiated in other churches around the world as a result. On September 11th, the San Francisco Church also hosted their 10-year anniversary. With all the Dream Church leaders and several disciples from all over the United States in attendance, this was their largest service ever with 601 souls present. It was a joy to have the San Francisco Mission Team leaders, Mike and Brittany Underhill, along with two other original team members, Aaron and Charmaine Pichichini, who spoke for contribution. Doctors Kip and Elena McKean were also in town for this historic occasion. Bringing many to tears during the communion, Elena shared how God transformed her life many times because of the power of the cross. And Kip preached a lesson for the ages entitled The Power of the Holy Spirit. The moving service ended with 13 baptisms and the sending out of the Fresno International Christian Church mission team valiantly led by Eric and Ariel Schramm. I was so encouraged to hear of the Fresno planting as this is my hometown. As mentioned before, both Mike and Jason also received their ICCM doctorate degrees in ministry at the GLC this past August. We are so very proud of their academic accomplishments, which through faith expressing itself in love and hard work have built two model congregations. I too am so inspired by the Boston and San Francisco churches, as well as witnessing almost 4,000 disciples at the GLC worshiping with songs of joy at all the great things the Lord has done for us among the nations. Indeed, we are family till the end. This is Luke and Brandon Speckman reporting to you from the Good News Network. The best news you'll ever see.